Let's go back to, to Rosanna. I want to talk about the verse muted guitar part. Right? Oh, yeah. So that stuff you can play all day yes. so accurately. I spent, well, here's the thing. I, I, I've been paid to play rhythm guitar 90% of the time. So it's one of those kind of things that some people starting out now that I've seen, uh, you know, you, dazzle you online. But they've spent time to, you know, get the take, and there's nothing wrong with that. We spend time in the studio getting a great take. Right. I'm not talking about that. But they, a lot of these guys, they didn't spend a lot of time doing the dumb shit, which is learning how to just play simple with a drummer and groove. It's harder than it looks. Yeah. With the click track. Yeah. Know? It's a click track. Make it have Very feel. intimidating to That's people. That's right. Because it keeps, I saw some of these wonder kids, you know, years ago, not the ones we got today, but years ago on the internet or when that was first starting out and these cats could play brilliant. And then you see them at the NAMM show and they're three bars ahead of their backing track because they're <laughs> nervous as fuck and, it's, and their whole mystique has been blown. Because you, I'm not saying you need to sit in front of a click track all day long. You, I mean, if you're a natural musician, time is something that should feel pretty normal to you. But playing along to records, and figure out why that feels good. A lot of records didn't have clicks. That's why, you know, people that give... You, did any, the Beatles if anybody, use clicks if, if, ever? If anybody gives... Ringo it was the click. He goes, I, am the, the, click. I am the click. <laughs> and he is. He is? He, man, let me tell you, and all the creative drum parts, instead of going boom, smack, boom, boom, smack, which would have fit all those, but him, blah, 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 and come to all those creative drum parts, those were his parts. Yeah. And without those, that's right. The songs the would Beatles not would be even... sounded completely different. That's right. Every all four of those guys created the genius. That's right. And they're all geniuses on their own. Right. But collectively, there was magic there that you can't rehearse, learn, find it. It's magic from God, from heaven, whatever you want to believe in. I mean, I believe it's somewhat heaven sent. You know. I mean, I don't think that fast. Why did I play? Why did this part come into my head when I heard these chord changes? I, I really wish I could tell you I was that brilliant, but I mean, something inspires me. And it, it's like one day I could play the guitar, I couldn't play, and one day I could. It was very weird. I was sitting on my front, struggling through it, and one, you know, nobody's ever gonna believe this. I told this story before, but, you know, all of a sudden I went. <laughs> went like. <laughs> and when my mother was pregnant, a psychic told her this, that I was, was probably going to be a musician when they're certain eight years old. All of a sudden, it would make sense to me. I saw the Beatles when I said started playing when I was around eight. <clears throat> it was very strange. Okay, I want to ask you about this about about your right hand. Okay. So I'm seeing you play up right here, and your right hand is so relaxed. Now, My teacher, it was. It's all about first off relaxing the wrist. Right. If you're stiff like this, not only is it harder to execute, but it's also going to give you tendonitis one of these days. Right. Sec advice number two, when it starts to hurt from practicing, please stop. Please stop. Get up, stretch it out, walk around. Otherwise, you're going to practice yourself into hell. Then you won't be able to play at all. I got a couple of friends of mine that have done that. Oh, yeah. They would never put it down. They were like, I'm going to get, stay in my house all day long, practice 16 hours a day. Now they can't play at all. So what was the point of that exercise? If you're a weightlifter, you don't just sit there and lift up 300 pounds all day long. Your muscles are going to go like this, you know. But it's the same thing with any musical instrument. When it hurts, you gotta, there's a reason why it hurts. Now, if you're playing live and it's like, you know, then you're going to give up the blood. But you got to let it rest for a while. You can't just keep at it. Otherwise, it's like my knee. I just had my knee replaced, you know. It's not my fault. I just got old and wore it down to bone. And you got to get replacement parts. I'm 65, the decade of replacement parts. Are there things that you wanted to have practiced or think about practicing? Any new oh, ideas man. that you I, work I, on? Like, you know, when I see, you know, I remember when I first heard Alan Holdsworth. Yeah. You know, and, and he, God bless his soul, he became, he was a good friend, man. I mean, I mean, I could, I'm not good enough to curl up his cables, but, you know, we were buddies, you know, and, and you know, outside off the gig but i used to go see him play mm -hmm. and before i mean he when i heard believe it the tony williams album in 1975 oh, yeah. before eddie was even thought of I yeah mean, in terms of fame um I, I, we didn't understand what that was and how it was happening 
but we listened to it over and Did over. Did you go see him play live back then? I had, no, he wasn't playing around at that time. Um, but we did get to know each other a little bit. I used to go see when he started playing around town. I went to see him. Talk about how great of a guitar player oh, Alan was. And the worst part about it, he'd play the most astounding shit, and then he'd come off the gig going, that's the worst I've ever played. And I said, well, then I guess we should all go home and kill ourselves then, Alan, because <laughs> you know, there's no point in it anymore. But he was so humble, to a fault, I think. He was like, come yeah. on, man, what are you giving yourself? you got to know that that's pretty good. Right. That nobody else on planet Earth has can play chords unless they have eight fingers down the air. <laughs> and, you know, he's just, and it was so, that legato thing. Yeah, I never so really, you know, I can do a little bit of it, but I mean, that's something that I really wish I could. I just think, you know, I got what I got. I got to be happy. I, I got more than I deserve. It's, it's another time. And I think people having these styles, if everybody does it, that's right. Nobody has nobody's an individual. You know, it's like I remember talking to Ed about the whole, you know, you know, the whole, you know. Everybody does it. What did he think of that? He just he goes, did it bother him, or did he did not care? It depends on what mood he was in. <laughs> we talked about him. He says it's become a parlor trick. I was just trying to make music and fill out the sound of a, a three-piece band, and it all came off of right. "Heartbreaker" by Jimmy Page. He just said, "Damn, nah, you know." Nah. <laughs> Uh, you know, oh, look what I found, you know? Right. And then he went crazy discovering all that. I'm sorry I'm playing all this shit real sloppy. I'm just making bad examples. But, you know, and then he said it became a thing, you know? And then, then when everybody did it and turned it into this thing, he felt weird about it. But then again, you know, that's why, I, I mean, everybody started doing it for a while, and, you know, myself included, I, mean, I never did it very well, by the way, but I won't do that anymore. I won't get... I won't get that. I won't do anything that remotely because Ed was too important to me. I knew too you and important. Ed were really, really close he was, friends. He was a very, 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 very close friend. I mean, we saw each other a lot off the, off the gig, you know. And when we hung out, we didn't sit around talking about guitar shit. You know, we were just being two idiots that kind of know what the life is. And we had a lot of fun, did some crazy shit together, but he was a sweet man. All he cared about was playing and his family. That's all he cared about. Now. Talk about what was great, uh, from your perspective, about Ed's playing. What, what, did, what did you love about his playing? <sighs> Everything. Um, Trailblazer. I mean, we were doing our very first album, and you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm 19 years old, everybody's giving me all this love and shit like that, you know? And Paige, he goes, I got some for you. I was doing, just about to do the solo in the song called Girl Goodbye. He goes, yeah, before you start, I want to play you something. I just got this new record. I go, yeah, what it is? And they had a turntable in the studio. And he lifts down the needle on eruption <laughs> and plays it for me, man. And, and, you know, it, it, it was the most mind-fucking thing I've ever I go, how and what, what, who, how? I went, fuck. And I, then I'd heard of this guy. We thought, me and Landau thought, oh, really, I'd speak for myself. Gazari's down here in Hollywood. Okay. Right? Van Halen was the headline act. Now, we had heard about a guy named Van Halen, because Landau and I used to go down to the guitar center and play guitars we couldn't afford. And then the, and we were good, and the guys would come up and say, you know, there's another guy that comes in here from Pasadena. You guys should meet him. Van Halen. I thought a guy was named Van <laughs> Halen, like a dude. I didn't know it was a family. Right. And we auditioned for Gazars when we were 16 years old, but we didn't tell him. Me and Landau and John Pierce, we had a band. And uh, we got the gig until they found out we were 16. And then Van Halen was the headline act, and they had been for a while. And when the first Van Halen came out, Eddie lied about his age. And the first time we ever really hung out and had an all-nighter together, she's like, how the fuck old are you? He goes, I'm, I'm, he was two years older than me. I go, they said you were this old. He goes, that, was, that wasn't me. They lowered my age because they somehow thought it would make me cool. Didn't, at the end, everybody found out. It's no, I'm not telling any secrets. Right, right, right. He was two years older than me. I, he would have been 67. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he just, he, it blew my mind. It blew the socks off of the guitar. It was like Hendrix when he came in. Nobody knew what, the fu what he was doing and how that, what the sounds were made. But Eddie was just on fire. Yeah. And didn't play like anybody else. And we need a cat. We need another. Ron, there's a couple cats I've heard lately that I may have mentioned that are turning it around, taking the instrument in a different direction. There's the purists. There's always going to be the purists. 
the great blues players, the great metal players. That's good for great country players. But, you know, the guys that fall in the cracks and take the rock thing into another level, maybe not in a commercial level. If I could have one honest critique of modern rock music or modern pop music in general is that there are some phenomenal players that you go, wow. What there's not is a lot of phenomenal songs. Right. You know, put Stevie Wonder's Send One Your Love or anything off of a Stevie Wonder, first five Stevie Wonder albums against what the harmonic content of a number one record is today. Oh, yeah. No, I'm an old bastard, all oh, the old guy, he doesn't get the you. Just speaking from a harmonic standpoint of what a pop record could get away with. When, when, when you're saying harmonic, things. just for people, that you mean the harmony. The, I mean the, the, chords, the chords not being stupid, one, three, five, simple. There was altered chords. There were yeah. sevenths, ninths. That's right. Th Even on pop, so much color. somebody throw in something, you know what I mean? That's right. And the assumption that the people in the audience are going to go, oh, that's that jazz music, I'm going to turn it off. Never entered anybody's mind. No. It was just, a, you know, the beautiful Al Jarreau records. The Graydon produced, man. All those great Earth, Wind, and Fire records. Oh, yeah. I am that uh, Foster wrote and co-wrote and produced, and I got to play a little bit on, uh, you know, all those great songs in the Stone, After the Love Is Gone. You know, oh, a yeah. ballad with those corners. I remember hearing those guys writing that song. We'd be on a Barbara Streisand session, and Foster and Graydon's going, "Hey, we got this new song. It's called After the Love Is Gone," and it had the great whole tone minor modulation. It, you know, nobody ever heard that before. I was like, "Whoa." When was the last time you listened to a pop radio and went, whoa, what the hell, what was that? Uh, I'm not trying to put down modern music. It's no. a different thing altogether. Yeah. Because for music for us, that was the, it. There right. was no cell phone. There was no distractions. Somebody got a new album. We went to the guy's house. We had the best stereo. We all sat in a line so we could all get an equal fucking distance between the left and right speakers. Side one would go on and nobody would really talk except for something great and punch the guy behind you. And then... At the end of side one, you go, fuck, and then you discuss a little bit, and you play side two, same thing would happen. You go, play side one again. And we take these records in. We take the artist's effort, and it meant something. And we study it. We learn. Then we get out some guitars or something and go, like, Let's, what, the, what was yeah. that? Let's, me and Mike would sit around and hang out, or something. one of us would learn something and go, like, oh, yeah, this is, oh, that's what it is. You know, and we, and, you know. That was how you grew. And then we had places that we had gigs we could do. There's no gigs which anymore. Is, which is really important. There's no gigs. There's no high right. school dances. There's right. no teenage fair where you go play no. and you, 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 people come see you. Uh, you know, even backyard parties on a Friday night, they'd hire a band. You That's know, right. even if it's all the beer you could drink in high school. Yeah, great, we're in. But, you know, now it's all DJs. That's right. 